Hello and welcome back to Byron's Adventures. As you can see, we do have a Vlandian army on the horizon and uh, they were attempting to besiege this. And I believe they just stopped because we had a number of vassals in the area that were attempting to be a bit defensive. And that's exactly what I really, really love about Bannerlord, actually. The amount of, mm, shall we say, proactiveness that the vassals that you have under your command tend to display that really makes a huge difference to the enjoyment of the game and that's exactly also the reason why when you persuade someone and they end up defecting after you spend a huge amount of money to convince them that's also why that is really really painful in comparison to now where they actually stick around for a little bit longer <laughs> for a little bit longer than that of course i'm not entirely sure if they stay forever because I don't really know about that. I, 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 I think I've seen one clan in particular leave my, uh, leave my faction, and I believe they had a pretty significant relation, but that could just be me imagining things, because I do tend to get a little bit confused as to the names of the various clans. Oh yes, someone actually mentioned in the comments that they wanted to know the name of my uh, current spear slash lance, and I will be showing you that after this battle i actually intended to show you beforehand but i saw the vlandian army and i was like oh okay okay we're gonna have to fight these guys and we'll see what we can do and i do try to remember by the way i do try to remember as many comments that i can answer as possible because i just feel like it is a lot more well shall we say it just conveys it maybe better dependent on if i'm actually able to put my point across <laughs> it really depends because you know me sometimes i uh, don't really make that much sense and uh, that's that's not not your fault. That is not your fault. It's just literally me uh, not making sense ever. Uh, well, <laughs> maybe sometimes, maybe sometimes. But yes. Anyway, the point is is that I do try to uh, respond to comments as much as I possibly can if I can remember uh, the comments that I wanted to respond to. I can of course write it down and everything, but I do not have a piece of paper nearby, so. I generally tend to prefer to remember them organically, but if I do that, then of course, uh, you know, it can end up that I end up forgetting stuff. But I'm, I'm glad that if I can respond to some of you and uh, answer your questions and uh, potentially, uh, you know, respond to you in that way, because uh, sometimes I just don't have time to write write a comment or anything like that. So, yeah, I, but just, just bear in mind that I do read every single one, so, you know. I like to, uh, I like to respond in uh, in recording sometimes. Oh, you're dead! Look at that! Oh, that was fantastic! Wow, he really did not see that coming, did he? No, he did not see that coming one bit. Let's tell our cavalry and horse archers to charge in. I'm not going to be employing too many tactics here because I'm pretty sure we have a pretty decisive advantage. We're going to put my uh, infantry in the shield wall. Should have done that beforehand. I think I'm actually maybe dead here. No, oh no, 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 we're fine, we're fine, okay. As long as we can kind of just relax, chill out, make sure that our horse stays alive, I don't think we're going to be having too many difficulties with that. As you can see, nice damage being done here by Byron, and I think, personally, he's probably, I, I, I don't actually know, because I think I saw a comment, actually, uh, maybe in the... Uh, uh, past three episodes or so, someone said that uh, their character ended up dying at age 41. Age 41, and that was an unmodded. Um, that was I, I, th I think that was unmodded, and uh, we, we've lasted until we're like 95 or something like that. And we had um, artificially increasing speed as to which our uh, you know age increased at, at a dramatically faster rate. So it was. It was very surprising to me to hear that uh, some people's characters are dying very, very early. And I'm not entirely sure why that would be. Is it, is it uh, external factors or is it just a RNG thing? Is it just random? I don't know. So I guess we'll find out as time goes on. But oh, there we go. Pretty, pretty decent amount of money right there. And uh, of course, we're going to try and continue persuading people as much as we possibly can. But I really just wanted to eliminate these guys as much as possible, as fast as possible, possible shall we say. Okay, I'm just going to be taking all of the troops because, let's face it, 
One of you, one of you is indeed correct in the uh, in the comments. There's actually a number of you, obviously, <laughs> that are correct. But I'm wanting to specifically highlight this one comment where you said, "Well, even if you do auto resolve, you're going to end up losing quite a few units, and then you're going to have to recruit those, and it's going to just waste as much time as the auto resolve would have saved." And yes, you're correct. Absolutely, you are correct about that. However, the one thing that I just wanted to say is that generally, when I do an auto resolve, I'm going to have such an extreme combat strength advantage because usually I will not try to do a uh, an auto resolve at like 50-50. So if the enemy has 50% combat strength and I have 50% combat strength out of the total bar bar length, then I usually won't do an auto resolve at that point because as you are correct, it would take way too many casualties for my side to really make that worth it. And as a result, I would much prefer to head in and actually do damage manually. So yeah, but that's the point. Generally, I will only do auto resolve if I can be assured pretty much 100% that I will not be taking too many casualties uh, from that. And I'm now kind of figuring out where we should go next because... I am a bit in a bit in two minds about what we should do. Shall we go for Praven? Shall we go for Ox Hall? It might it might make sense actually for us to just call for an army. I knew oh yeah, I do need to go and uh, buy some buy some food. Let me see if I can actually find some here. Grapes? Uh, get out of here with your grapes. I mean, I don't really mind grapes, but uh, I prefer grain because grain generally tends to have larger stacks. Um, but obviously I don't really want my army to literally just eat, you know, grain or grapes or any singular food, to be honest. Ooh, there is a large army over there that I think has just, uh, I think they just disbanded actually. Okay. Don't really need to worry about that. But yeah, as you can see, I'm only buying 46 lots of grapes, which is kind of awful. So it would be nice if I could maybe find, oh, grapes, what? Yeah, anytime you see a huge amount of grapes, build a winery. Yes, build a winery or uh, you know some kind of wine press or something like that, because no doubt that's gonna that's gonna really skyrocket like no one's business. So it might make sense to do that. Although Maranath, in my opinion, is a much better place to have a smoothie. Maybe Dunglanis would be best for a wine press or something like that. Not entirely sure. All right, so this is this is grain, right? Yeah, this is grain over here. All right, so. Uh, one thing that I actually wanted to show you is my, of my spear, of course. I almost forgot. <laughs> I almost forgot, yes. You know me. I almost forget about those things almost all the time. Yes, very good. Anyway, this is it. It is, in my opinion, not particularly good. But I personally like it quite a bit because it has the ability to do quite a, quite a good amount of piercing damage, thrusting damage. And it also has the ability to swing. So if you put it into a two-handed stance... You're going to be able to do quite significant damage to multiple enemies, especially if you're fighting low tier units in comparison to high tier, of course. So yeah, this is it. You, I think you can find it in Empire territory. This is an Empire based weapon. So you probably want to go and look around the marketplaces there. Or if you're fighting against the Empire, then you'll probably be able to find it in loot. So I hope that helps. Anyway, let's go into Maranath real quick. Ooh, look at this. Oh, very nice indeed. We're actually getting uh, Of Castle. Ooh, very good, very good. I don't know whether you remember Of Castle from a long time ago in this series where we actually took it, I believe, from the... Ah, uh, was it Western Empire or Northern Empire? One of, one of them, at least. And we took it from them, and then they decided... Uh, I think then the uh, Batanians or the Crusade or something decided to take it back. It was kind of weird, but anyway... We've taken off castle, so I'm going to be awarding that relatively soon. And we are just going to be selling absolutely everything at Maranath here. Look at that, 21,000 for that. 35,000. What about all of my armor? <laughs> uh, 181,000. Yeah, that's, pr that's probably a little bit too much, isn't it? That is probably a little bit too much. So I'm just going to sort this by value real quick so that I can just sell the most expensive items first. And I have learned that completely from you, by the way. So thank you very much once again for letting me know that you can use these menus at the top. I just don't, I don't know. I just never use these kinds of things anywhere. 
you know, websites, games, you know, I just never use those kinds of uh, sorting, sorting tools, even though they make it so much easier, you know, they make it so much easier. So we're just going to sell all of that. We'll get 166,000. I think that is pretty good. Oh, huge amounts of grain. Okay, you know what? We're not going to get all the grain. Actually, you know what I can do? We're just going to get a little bit of it. There we go. We now have over a thousand grain. But look, look, look at the, no, actually not over a thousand. We have nine hundred and sixty-four. But the point is, is that we have sixty days, only sixty, after we just purchased a huge amount of grain. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Okay. So technically, what I can do is I can give this to myself, but I'm not going to do that more than likely because I would like one of these guys to have it. I think we're probably going to give it to Oros just because he has a little bit of. A little bit of support in the realm and it kind of makes sense to do that just to not annoy anyone too much all right so did i actually do that policy by the way the cantons policy because um someone told me a long time ago that cantons is really good for militia production so we're actually going to say yes to this unfortunately saruk is going to lose a bit, little bit of relation but we're just going to push this through and it might make things a little bit maybe not so good in terms of my wages from taxes as you can see the taxes are a little bit reduced i mean 10 percent. i mean 10 percent is quite significant hmm. i think it's okay for the moment i think it's okay okay so what we're also going to do is take a look at byron's stats because we haven't done this in a very long time and as you can see we do have Ooh, building development. Well, that's not exactly important for me at the moment. We did also hit 300 medicine, but obviously that doesn't really do that much for us. And uh, I have no idea what else to spec into, as you can see. I mean, I could I could basically spec into endurance, I suppose. That might make sense. Uh, I could go for some more trade skill, but again, trade skill is not really going to do that much for me. Uh, I could do athletics, but again, athletics... Mm, I, I guess, I guess, why not? I mean, it's going to give me plus 3% movement speed, which might actually make sense. Um, I, I'm not going to go through all of my all of my uh, companions and, and family members here because uh, that is tedious busy work that I don't think you really want to see. So we're not going to do that right now. I will, I will do that off screen or something like that. If there's anything particularly interesting, then of course I will show you. But uh, usually it is literally just taking the uh, regular traits that we always take and there's nothing really to worry about there. All right, so first off, what I'm going to do before we head into this army here, I'm going to just take a look and see what kinds of armies we have currently up and running. Okay, so we have Asta Castle. These two are coming to defend this, which is basically pointless because I have already done something about that. So that's not too bad. And these guys are gathering, they're gathering, and these are going to raid something. Sure, okay, if you want to raid something, then I I guess I will not stop you because it might actually do some economic damage a little bit, so I guess that's okay, but generally raiding at this point is pretty much useless in my opinion. All right, so we're going to take a look here. Uh, ah, <laughs> uh, that's not particularly good. Uh, Bukul, Bukul, yeah, you seem to have uh, run in a little bit eagerly here. And as a result, it has made me not able to speak to Fafn because I actually wanted to speak to him and maybe see if he wanted to join us because I personally feel like it gets a lot easier later down the line for you to be able to persuade vassals to join you if their own faction is taking a lot of damage. And I mean, like, taking a lot of damage. You know, losing a lot of land, taking many, many casualties in field battles and things like that. That really does make... A huge difference so i'm hoping that we'll be able to well i mean i think we will be able to achieve a victory here but i really really wanted to speak to him because being able to speak to him and persuade him especially considering the fact that he's more than likely going to have some thief or another it would probably make the most sense for us to you know try and persuade him every single time even if he asks for 10 billion gold or whatever you know that's that's just that's just how it is you know i mean maybe maybe we'll have a better opportunity at some point and that's the uh, that's the point that i wanted to try and make you know it's just much much better to try for the persuasion attempt rather than not because you can always go into the battle afterwards 
All right, so we're going to just be very careful here. Don't really want to get killed off my mount, if at all possible. It is called Mountain Blade for a reason. I don't have a blade, though, so I kind of feel a little bit out of place. But I suppose those of you that are playing the game and do have a blade for your character, you're carrying the banner for us. Ah, did you see what I did there? Yes, because it's called Banner, Banner Lord. Yes, Banner, Banner Lord. Hmm. That's a better name. That's what that, that would have been uh, much more marketable, don't you think? <laughs> double banner. Double the banner, double the fun, right? <laughs> I'm just kidding, of course. Anyway, so what we're going to do is I'm actually going to take my cavalry and take my horse archers. And we're going to take them around the side here. I think we're doing all right so far. I, I think, yeah, as you can see, the enemy's uh, infantry are just blindly charging in pretty much. And I'm going to be telling my cavalry and so on and so forth to charge in now. And let's see if I can do some damage with my spear. Oh, yeah. Now, bear in mind that while uh, while I do enjoy this spear quite a bit, I will say that it is uh, a little bit... Maybe not so useful in these kinds of situations. Like, for example, me getting murdered right here. <laughs> this, is, this is not that useful. This is not that useful, unfortunately. Because it doesn't really allow you to attack in any meaningful fashion because if you try to attack you're just going to get blocked or you're not going to be able to have enough thrusting speed to be able to make it work so that's the kind of thing that you've got to be a bit aware of and i would highly recommend if you are wanting to use some kind of spear that maybe if you're using um thrown weapons or something along those lines and not using a bow because obviously you can only have lance, shield, bow and arrows or crossbow and bolts or two thrown weapon stacks or whatever. But if you're using thrown weapons then I'd recommend maybe if you're using a lance as well as a as well as thrown weapons then I'd recommend doing lance, shield, one-handed weapon of some kind so axe, mace, sword, something like that and then your thrown weapon stack because personally the spear on foot unless you're much better than I am you know because I I have shown before in this series that I am not very good at using a spear on foot even though I did get a little bit better in those tournaments I think I did quite well there um, to, to learn a little bit better about how to use it adequately with a little bit of uh, velocity added to the thrusts because you can of course do that with the use of the camera in a clever way so you can basically turn your character a little bit to the right and then as you're pulling back the spear to thrust toward the opponent you move your character more to the left if you see what I mean I think uh, previous episodes will do a better job of explaining that or at least demonstrating that than I can explain at this point so good idea to check those out if you want but obviously we are winning oh yes we are winning very much so and i like it uh, i'd like to speak to this guy actually i really want to speak to this guy because i wouldn't mind trying to persuade him because he is quite powerful and having him be a mercenary for our opponent is bad <laughs> is really bad because as i said when i released them i was i was kind of dreading fighting them to be honest and i knew that they would be picked up because they are very very effective units all right. Oh, we actually gained a bunch of uh, extra extra troops. That is actually kind of fantastic. I was not expecting that. I thought, you know, uh, such a small, normal army, you know, is probably not going to really have that many available for us to rescue. But no, they actually had quite a bit. All right. So we've taken a number of units here. And this is also a reason why uh, auto-resolve might actually be kind of fun. Because it does, in my opinion, I think make it possible for you to have more wounded casualties than people that have actually just straight up died so that, that might also be a thing i'm not sure whether i'm mm, no i think i might just be imagining things to be honest i don't think that is actually how it is all the time but i think auto resolve might make things a little more prone to being knocked unconscious especially maybe if it takes into account medicinal skills and things like that but I, I really don't know about it. So I'm not going to 100% say either way whether that is the case. But it's, it's you know, I think it's uh, safe to assume that it's probably about the same. 
Anyway, let's go over here. Just get all of our rescued prisoners and all of our prisoners, um, you know, persuaded as much as we possibly can. Let's go into the castle and wait here for some time because, of course, Byron does need to rest up a little bit. Now, what we're also going to do is we're going to get a massive army up and running, and I will be trying to take one of the towns around here. I think Ox Hall would probably be a good one to take. And we'll see what happens with it because I don't really want to wait a significant amount of time for us to get the walls down because that's going to drain my food supplies by a pretty significant amount. But draining the food supplies, does that really matter? Oh, there's Death, uh, there's Death Arts Army. This might be a bit problematic. I'm not entirely sure how I'm supposed to deal with this guy because, let's see, he's, he's very rich, as we know. Death Art is quite a greedy fellow, and he is going to be extremely rich. He's probably going to have about 10 million gold at this point in the game. I could potentially speak to him and make peace, but I'm not entirely sure if making peace is then going to force the Kuzate's hand, because at the moment, they're just leaving us alone and not really doing much. So it might make sense for us to just not poke the bear, so to speak. So that might make a bit of sense. Okay, so I'm just literally going to wait here for a little bit of time. And we're going to get uh, Bukul to come over here and maybe help us out. Hey, come on now. Come on now, friend. Let's do this. Oh, yes. Yeah, now we know that Death Art literally has uh, one of probably the weakest armies that I've seen so far. And, of course, that is to be expected because he is running around with about three, uh, what was it, 300 low tier units? Yeah, about 300 low tier units. You can see here that he has 34 Vlandian recruits, some Sturgeon warriors and things like that. This guy has 42 recruits. This guy has 48 and so on and so forth. And that's exactly how it should be. If a faction is on the back foot and they're losing a bunch of territory, I don't think they should be able to run around with, with high tier units in an instant. So it's really nice that uh, eventually you're able to cause enough damage to a, to a particular, particular faction's economy and the way that they do things to be able to reduce their quality of their armies. So that really makes a difference. All right, so let's get ready, shall we? Oh, they're actually really far away. Hmm. Not entirely sure what I can do here about this. Uh, I guess we're going to... I'm going to play this a little bit more carefully because usually you know me, I like to run around, I like to spear people in the face, I like to get speared in the face myself apparently as well because that happens quite often. Uh, yes, much more often than I would like, but uh, well, never mind. Anyway, let's uh, let's get my people into a nice position. Uh, this is not really a nice position, but I guess this is the best that I can currently do uh, this battlefield is not my favorite by any means this is one of the probably the one of the worst battlefields for me because it's uh very very uneven terrain so it's not very good for cavalry and it's not very good for archers either there doesn't seem to be that much height advantage to be gained from here unless you were to walk over to this particular uh, little hilltop that might make sense mm. should i do this I mean, we could, actually. I just don't know whether we're going to be in time. That's the point, because generally the AI likes to be quite effective, effective, quite aggressive, quite eager to do what they want to do. So, wow. Okay, don't die, Byron, please. <laughs> oh, that was awful. Yeah, that was really, really bad. But at least we uh, kind of distracted them a little bit and uh, maybe maybe thought to themselves, oh, look at that commander, he's an idiot, isn't he? Yes, we don't need to really rush to charge, let's just wait until their archers get into a decent position. Yes, that's what they're saying. I very much hope. Very much hope that that is indeed the case. Okay, so let's get my people into a nice position here, and now I'm so low in HP that I'm probably going to die from pretty much any attack. Which, i got to say, is not what I wanted one bit. Let's tell my cavalry to just go over to the side there. We're going to just play a bit more of a commander role in this particular battle until we have kind of seen what the enemy is wanting to do. I don't really want to head in there myself. And I was attempting to do a little bit of, you know, sporadic damage with, uh, with the bow a little bit. But as it stands, eh, we, you know, sometimes you just get that random shot in the face and it just tends to be quite damaging. But I guess I'm gonna, just going to get out my bow and see if we can do some damage with that. 
Ah, hit the shield, why don't you, Byron? Yes, very good. Ah, there we go. That was a that was a headshot, but no kill. Okay, that's kind of funny. All right, so the enemy is now charging in right here. I'm gonna tell my cavalry to once more move past, and we want them to do that. We want them to basically. Oh, they're they're actually running. That is kind of hilarious. Okay, let's tell my cavalry and horse archers to charge in from the side. Did you see that? Did you see that? Wow! Did you see that right there? That horse was doing the helicopter in the air on the left side of the screen. Go back. It maybe maybe you can see it. Go back in the video. Press uh, press J. Yeah, the keybind. <laughs> uh, yeah, press J to go back 10 seconds. Uh, if you d if you didn't know that, then now you do. Now you do. You can press J to go back 10 seconds. K to pause, and L to go forward 10 seconds. And uh, yeah, a variety of other keybinds are available as well. But those are the ones that I mainly use. Anyway, we're going to try and do some pokey damage. But uh, that's probably not the <laughs> probably not the best idea. Yes. Probably not the best idea. Is it just me, or is, does, does Byron have some kind of death wish? It seems like he does. I'm not entirely sure why, but there you go. Anyway, this I, I personally feel like the eagle eye view, or the bird's eye view, is really, really cool when you're having these kinds of battles, because you can quite clearly see where the battles have taken place. And look at this. This is a pure line right here. Pure line of enemy units that have fallen in battle, and, well... They fell before the might of the kingdom of Byronia. And that's exactly how it should be, isn't it? Yes, that is exactly how it should be. And my cavalry is chasing off a couple of their stragglers. And, well, this is this is just great. Let's speed it up a little bit because this is just a foregone conclusion now. Very formal, uh, very, very much a formality, actually, to eliminate these guys. And there you go. That is indeed a victory. And I am very, very pleased to say that I think that's probably the last Vlandian army that we're probably going to be seeing for quite a while. So the attacker's army... Ah, they actually had a lot of uh, a lot of people in their army right now, and they actually ended up losing quite a few units. But, well, they can, uh, they can go off and they can uh, take a load off. They can just kind of relax, and uh, they don't really have to do too much. All right, so I'm just going to let these guys go, and we don't have to really worry about them. And uh, hopefully we're going to be able to speak to a couple of them, because I would like to get Tassinor, I would like to get Audric, and I don't think there are any others. Unfortunately, Audric does have a pretty bad, uh, a bad opinion of us at the moment, which is kind of harsh, but oh well. All right, so I just took all of the prisoners that I wanted to, in other words, cavalry, and rescued some prisoners as well, I think we did. And then we'll just go and take all of the loot. There we are, fantastic. Okay, so let's take a brief overview of what is actually going on in the world at the moment. So you can see here the Azurai. I'm not entirely sure or who is still alive. I guess it's Unkid. Unkid is probably still active, running around, doing random stuff. Batania is at 4,000. Do you remember when Batania was at 23, 24,000 or something like that? No, no, now no longer. No, now no longer. Look at that. 25 successful sieges, 30 successful raids. Crazy. Vlandia, as you can see here, only 3,000, just about 3,000 almost. And they have had so many casualties inflicted. Successful raids, as you can see, 74. That's crazy. And the Kuzate, we're catching up to them, as you can see. We are at almost 28,000. They almost have 31,000. We are very, very even in terms of combat strength. I am extremely intrigued to see what will happen if they decide to declare war against us. But cross fingers, hopefully they won't just yet. Anyway, in the next episode, we're going to go on a uh, pretty extensive sieging spree. And I probably will be going for Ostakan as well as Turby Castle. Those are the two that I will aim to go for in the next episode but if i can do more then i would love to be able to but that is more of a consolidation effort than anything else because you can see here that it's kind of in its own little territory here and i don't want vassals and villagers and caravans running through my own territory to get over here i would much prefer those caravans to be mine so it makes much more sense anyway that will be it for this episode i thank you very much for watching and i will see you next time